to come to the Lord's house and uh, worship Him is a wonderful day. And this is certainly one of those days. Uh, we've got some uh, some things that we want to talk to you about today and remind you of. Uh, please pray for God's will to be done at the annual conference which starts this afternoon and it ends on Wednesday. And that all the groups that come out of this conference will have the renewed dedication to make disciples of everyone, uh, disciples of Jesus Christ here and throughout the world. Uh, we have one birthday to celebrate this week, James Smiker, and uh, he'll be nine. We also have one anniversary this week, Bernie and Elton Palmer's, uh, and that's on the night. Uh, we are happy to welcome our newest members, Billy and Kathy Wagner, uh, to our fellowship. Uh, we, we certainly want to offer our condolences to Karen Reeves uh, for her loss of her mother in Florida this past week on the 27th. Uh, last Sunday evening, we had a musical worship service led by the Real Truth Revival. Well, I hope you didn't miss that. Uh, I did. I, 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 I've been to a lot, of, a lot of conferences and concerts, and that's honestly the best and one I'm begging that you get them back to <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, it was wonderful, and we want to express our appreciation to Linda, Linda Jerry, uh, Jerry, Jerry again for getting the angel. Jordan, is it Jordan? Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> for inviting them. I think she had to, uh, knows one of the singers there. Asked them if they were singing in North Myrtle Beach and they came here. Uh, it was certainly a joy filled time of worship for our Lord. And anyone that had anything to do, whether it was uh, to hang out bulletins or anything, would you just raise your hand? We want, we want to thank you for what you did for that to make that a wonderful worship show. It's also Eric, for especially for his expertise in the sound system and helping those guys get it up. They drove in a big red and black uh, bus pulling a huge trailer, and it was a big job. And they, they actually thank Eric for his help in getting it set up. And we want to thank everyone. <laughs> Well, by the way, Linda sang a uh, song with them <laughs> during the concert. It was wonderful too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. In your bulletin, you have an invitation for a baby shower being hosted by the United mm -hmm. Women of Faith on Tuesday, uh, June 6th at 1 o'clock in the Prince Fellowship Hall, and everyone is invited. The administrative board uh, will hold a meeting on this Thursday. June the 8th at 6 30. That will be to give you an update on what happened at the annual conference and a few other matters that we need to take care of. That's Thursday, June the 8th at 6 30. We have a Code Dish uh, Fellowship meal planned for next Sunday, June the 11th, in the Prince Fellowship Hall. So, you ladies and men, start thinking about your favorite foods and planning to bring them to share with your church family. In addition to the covered dish meal, uh, David Graham will be frying some fish for us, and he has asked that uh, some volunteers, men or women, in his case, may be help him. Is that Saturday, David, to cut the fish, or just on Sunday? We probably about two to Saturday to Sunday. Yeah, that will be dark. We will be out there to fry the fish Sunday. Okay. I'm going to need some help out there Sunday. All right, you're going to need the help on Sunday, not Saturday. Saturday, two people just to cut them up. All the ladies, we're going to get them. All the ladies, I can see them blocking up in one. If, if you can help David either Saturday or Sunday, please let him know so he'll uh, have everybody that he needs to accomplish his purpose. I got, I got a question. On Sunday, what time do you want the people that are helping him to gather down there to help him out? What time do they need to be down there? What time do the people on Sunday like, need to be there to help you? Uh, probably at 5 10 to get set up. If we want to even play, I'm going to have to go five and probably around 11, 11, 15. Okay. So at 10 o'clock, uh, you men or women that help David get it set up so we can have that delicious fish fry. David is a wonderful cook. Uh, each Sunday in May, we've had in the bulletin notice that we 
once the uh, annual conference is over and uh, at the end of June, uh, if you want to stay with the Norris Methodist Church, Inc., which is the new church, then you'll need to transfer your membership. And uh, I believe, is it, has the forms been handed out to you or the end of the Alice. Alice? I'll give it out about half of them this morning. Okay. I don't have them for everybody, but I'll read that time. I understand. So if you are a member of this church and want to stay with this church after the annual conference, assuming the disaffiliation goes through and we have no reason to believe it won't, please see Alice and get that form so that you can sign it. We'll have it ready. All we have to do is send it in. All right. Um, John, let me yes. ask one thing. Certainly. These forms have to, as the letter says, will become effective at the end of the month. So we have to hold one to sign. But when I give you the letter, if you want to get it right back to me and sign it, we'll give it back to the sign. But we do have to let it to you and make it sign. Okay. Well, the sooner we get it back, the less opportunity there is to forget about it. Um, and then, also about the fellowship deal, it's the regular way of this. I, just like it has been, but in addition to that, David is doing this right. Just that as, right. You ladies assume that the fellowship meal is just like it normally is, and everybody bring their favorite dish, and uh, we'll be blessed with David having a fish fry for the uh, extra, extra enjoyment. Uh, each week we have a specific need is chosen to, to present to the church for prayer. This week uh, we want to focus on uh, Matthew uh, 28, uh, 18 through 20, the Great Commission. Uh, some suggestions for your prayer this week are in the bulletin in the prayer uh, nugget for the week. There is also a list of missionaries in the bulletin. Thank you.
one or two. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Word of God for the people of God. Okay, we now move to the time of service where we share our joys and concerns and prayer requests. Are there any joys to be shared this morning? School's out. School's out. School's out. Oh, gee. Yeah. 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 All right. Any other joys to be shared? I've been enjoying this nice, pleasant weather. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Okay. My summer camp starts tomorrow. Summer camp starts tomorrow. All right. Okay. And the other joy. Uh, yeah, my, my son's here from Berlin, Germany. Uh huh. Berlin. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you. Good to have you. Thank you. Okay, the other joys. My birthday tonight. All right, tonight. Okay, all right. Good. Happy birthday to you. Okay? What's up? Yeah, you forgot? Okay. Any other joy? Well, I have a young lady sitting behind me with a joy to see her get back. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Any other joys? Jay? I had a joy. My daughter and granddaughter came down to visit and we went to the beach and mm -hmm. had a great time. And also, uh, our newest members came by the house and uh, mm -hmm. we had a cookout and uh, had a really joyful day. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Okay. Any other joys to be shared? Okay, um, now, um, okay. I am so thankful to be back in church. Okay. It bothers me. I've been out three Sundays. Yeah. And it really, really bothers me. And mm -hmm. I want you to know I miss all of you. Okay, good. Nice. All of you. All right. We appreciate that. It's good to have you back. Mm -hmm. And are you able to get the services on our Facebook or YouTube? We had a little glitch last Sunday, but that's okay. We worked, we worked it out. Every now and then we have a little glitch. Usually it's on YouTube and we can get it to you if something goes wrong with Facebook. Okay. All right. With a lot of help from yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any others? Okay. Any uh, prayer concerns? Ms. Jean Spivey, who's been attending his request of prayer, she wasn't feeling good that day. Well, today, and she's uh, been a new person that's been coming to our church. So she texted me requesting some prayer. Okay. Um, My nephew, Michael, he had a knee surgery, but then he's actually had to go back in because of the infection. So okay. Okay. All right. All right. Any other concerns? Having surgery Wednesday. Who? Barbara Rydell. Well, Barbara's having surgery Thursday. Barbara Rydell. Wednesday. Oh, the when? Wednesday. 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 Okay, Wednesday. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, one of the kids we the boys go to school with who <clears throat> probably died uh -huh. this week. Okay, so we're going to pray for that. We lost. Oh, we lost the father. Okay. Okay. Okay, any other prayer concern? Okay, unspoken request? Okay, we'll now have our call to prayer. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dear God, for the season of Pentecost, which we celebrate the coming of your Holy Spirit and the empowerment that we have, dear Father, through the Spirit. We thank you, dear God, for the way you are with us and comfort us and teach us and help us to discern all things through the Spirit. And dear God, we pray that you would strengthen us this morning in every way to be steadfast in our faith. Help us, Lord, as we look out upon a hurting world, to love them with the love that you love them with and that you loved us with, dear Father. And help us, Lord, to convey to them the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to obey your command, to go to all the world and convert them to you, dear Father, baptizing them and teaching them and making disciples. Lord, the world needs you now more than ever. And help us, Lord, to be mindful of that and remember that we have the answer to what's hurting this world. And we have the answer in our hearts. And Jesus is the answer for the hope, dear God, that we have for this world and the world to come. So Lord, help us to be steadfast in this endeavor. Dear Father, we pray for the prayer request this morning. All the people in our church, dear God, who are sick and are hurting, dear Father, many of them are facing very difficult circumstances. Dear God, we pray that you would heal. And dear God, where you will, we pray also, Lord, that you would comfort those that are dying. Dear God, be with them, Father. Let them feel the power of your spirit. Help us, dear God, to walk with them in this journey. Helping them to understand, Lord, that everything is in your hands, dear God, in eternity. If we trust in Jesus, is waiting for us a voice of eternity. Dear God, help us in this endeavor as we seek to heal others and walk with them. And we ask for healing in our church, in our community, in our nation, dear God, and in this world. Dear God, we thank you for the young people in our service. Thank you for the opportunity to show them the way of Jesus. We thank you this morning, dear God, for the opportunity to take Holy Communion. Lord, we're so thankful that we're able to worship the freedom that other people do not have. Help us, dear God, to understand this is a gift. It's an opportunity that we must capitalize upon to win other people to Jesus and take advantage of this in a wonderful way that gives you all the glory. And dear God, this morning as we give our gifts, we promise to be good stewards of those gifts, dear God, to spread the gospel of Jesus throughout this world, dear Father. And dear God, just pray that you'd be with us in a special way today, that your spirit Abide with us and settle down upon us, dear God, in a wonderful, powerful way. And dear God, we all pray together the prayer that you taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but to deliver us from the evil, the thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 We'll now worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings as the ushers come forward. <laughs>
give these gifts to in love. Lord, we know we can never outgive you. We thank you so much for all that you've given us. Lord, we promise and pray to be good stewards of these gifts, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout our community and world. In the name of Jesus, we promise and pray. Amen.
to obey everything I command you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the ages. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, this morning we're going to, as a community meditation, talk about the Great Commission. Um, the last words of people are always interesting. You just sit back and read the last words of celebrities and different famous people. Sometimes they speak of optimism, sometimes they speak of defeat and sadness and despair. Um, I just, it's just really interesting to take and Google some of them and see what Winston Churchill's last words were. What Stephen Hawking, that great scientist's last words were, basically didn't believe in God. So, so sad, you know. But what were the last words of Jesus Christ? Now, the first thing that comes to people's mind is the last words of him on the cross. Father, unto you I commend my spirit. Okay? But the last words of Jesus was the risen Savior as he gave them the great commission. Okay? He was alive. He had risen from the dead in this great commission. And he told them he had all authority. And in other words, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and, and nothing was created, as we saw in the reading from John. He has authority, okay? And it's His majesty, and His kingdom authority, and He gave them this command. It was not a suggestion. Um, and He promised that He would be with us always, even to the end of the age. So, what does this here command consist of? And it tells us in, in, in Matthew uh, 28, uh, 16 through 20, to preach the gospel to all the nations and all people, to work miracles in Jesus' name, to testify to the gospel, to baptize new believers, and to disciple those who receive Christ. So it tells us in Revelation 7 9, God reveals the grand finale of human history when humanity's struggle will finally be over and God will fill his eternal kingdom with a great, it says here, great multitude which no one can count from every nation, all tribes, and peoples, and tongues. If God is preparing us and his church and, and Jesus for a wonderful time together throughout eternity, we're going to be together with all people. It will be very diverse, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm looking forward to meeting those people that I have never known. I'm looking forward to meeting people that I've heard a lot about and they were very, very famous and things like that. And um, it's just going to be a wonderful time. And this is a reality we hold on to. And so we're supposed to, meantime, be reaching out to all people. And it's something that God wants us to do. He commands us to do. And he promises that he will help us to do that. We're also told that if we would work miracles. And these miracles are miracles of the early church. And all throughout the early church, they were, they were a church that performed miracles. And people get kind of skittish when you talk about miracles. But the thing about it is, is that God is in the miracle working business, okay? He really is. And I mean, they raised people from the dead, they healed the sick, and also they did things like cannibal serpents, and they were told like to drink poison, and things like that. Now, I think there's a way to look at this. I'm not telling you to have the snacks or nothing like that. But you know, um, there are people out there that are kind of like serpents, you know? Have you ever noticed that? And there's some evil people and people that are kind of poisonous. But we're supposed to, by the power of the Holy Spirit, handle them and help them, okay, and lead them to Christ. They can change, okay? And that's the good news, okay? And then healing the sick, well, there, and all of us know stories of miraculous healings, but we know that through medical technology, we can, and a lot of it has been inspired by the gospel, that, that people can be healed and have a better quality of life. However, the most important thing is not the miracles of healing, but the healing that takes place in the heart when that leprosy of the heart, the sinful heart has been changed and transformed and born again and made new, okay? And then we're supposed to baptize new believers. Baptism is very important. Baptism, it does not save you, but it is a way and an outward sign of saying to other people that, that we have died with Christ and we are risen with him into newness of life, okay? It's a witness. And it's something that we should encourage people to, to be baptized, if at all possible, because that is a way of saying to the world that you've been changed, that you've been transformed, and that your faith is in Jesus Christ, okay? And then another thing is making disciples, okay? Um, 
the simple fact is, is that it's, it's not simply about having people have an experience of being saved, but we have to encourage people to move on in Christian perfection, to strive to be more and more like Jesus. And the Western tradition is called sanctification, making disciples, making us more godly, more like Jesus, more a person of holiness of heart and holiness of life. One of the things that I always like about Billy Graham crusades is not only would you see people coming forward to be saved, but they mingled in people going forward who were also already saved, but they were counselors, so they could meet with those people at, down there when they came forward and pray with them and talk with them and encourage them in the faith. And that's very important. And John Wesley was noted for that, of discipling people, of getting people in small groups and having people grow in Christ and encourage them making disciples and disciplining people and disciplining them in love and helping them grow in the faith. And the thing is, is that we have a Savior that has all authority given to Him and we have the Holy Spirit that is the wind beneath our wings and helps us and Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit will be with us even to the end of the age. But the thing is, and the most important thing for us to realize today in the season of Pentecost is that God wants us to do something. He doesn't just want us to come to church. He wants us to go out and bring people into church and to reach out to this lost world and share with them the gospel. And you know, in this day and time, in America, although we have the freedom to do that, and it's very difficult for people in other parts of the world to do that, they do that, they share the gospel with the, with the threat of death, okay? Um, I had a friend of mine who was a Baptist minister who went to China one time, and we had a house pastor from China come up there in Chesterfield, and then they have house churches over there, and then China they have kind of a great revival going on. But he, when he made a trip over there, he had to stand at the airport for several hours until somebody finally came out of the crowd and said, follow me, okay? Because that's how severe the persecution is over there. And we don't have to deal with that. Not yet, not now. But we do know that being a Christian nowadays, you can draw some fire. We see that every day in, in, in the news and things like that. And that makes people reluctant. And we feel like, well, maybe we should go easy on people and not be confrontational. But we're supposed to be confrontational in a loving way and to witness to people and tell them the truth of the gospel, the wonder of the gospel, and then lead them into faith and help them to grow in the faith. That's the primary mission mission of the church and that's what we're here for okay so we will now continue with our communion service and I'll say this before we start we have an open table you don't have to take communion but you don't have to be a member to take communion okay this table is open to anyone and everyone the response of petition let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon God while he is near. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart. God will not despise. Let us draw near to God and worship at his footstool. Hear this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with all our heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The peace of our risen Lord be with you. Now, let us stand and turn to one another and shake a hand, hug somebody, and tell them you all.
And that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? It's good to be free of that COVID thing that kept us from doing this kind of thing. Okay? Good. <laughs> okay, we will now have our great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let them love the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord of God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us a breath of life. And when we turned away, our love failed. Your love remains steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending, unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who were oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from Satan to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by word and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire, as on the day of Pentecost, on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And on the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one bread of life, we who are many are one body of Christ, sustained by the bread and wine of the Spirit Jesus. <clears throat> the bread which we break is the sharing in the body of Christ our Lord. The cup over which we give thanks is the sharing in the blood of Christ our Savior. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken for you.
This is the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Now it's a music place. Come forward and receive communion, and we'll begin with the side.